Hey everyone, this is Sean from the MotorWorks. Uh, today I'm going to start a series of videos where I give you some details on how I do some of the things around the shop. Um, I've been building bikes and parts for about 12 years now, uh, so I don't claim to know everything, but there are some tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that I think might be helpful to you. The thing I'm going to be showing you today is how to take a piece of hollow aluminum tube and get a really nice gradual and structural bend so that you can use it in your fabrication projects. I'm not going to be using a mandrel bender or any other kind of complicated bender. I'm just going to be using a 20 ton shop press from Horror Freight and uh, simple things like a piece of steel, another piece of steel, bismuth alloy. I'm going to detail the whole process for you. So this is the swing arm that was designed in SolidWorks. This is the bend. So basically this part was already designed um, to work well with you know, what I've got for the bike. The challenge is just going to be putting that bend into this piece of metal. I designed uh, this swing arm based on you know, what the bike needed and one of the parts that I had to fabricate based on the design was this uh, hollow piece of aluminum tubing with this really nice bend in it. My go-to for getting that made was to call around and see if people could mandrel bend that part. And mandrel bending consists of bending the tube around a, a die, which has that radius in it. Um, but it also has a flexible solid piece that goes in the middle of the tube to keep it from collapsing. I called around for days. I couldn't find anybody willing to do it or who had the tools to do it. I just decided I'd have to figure out how to make this part in house. So the first try I did with a hollow tube just ended up flattening the tube out. Um, so I knew that wouldn't work. The second try I did was to fill the tube with sand because I've used that before with exhaust bending and that worked out pretty well. With sand it did the same thing. The tubing ended up flattening out because as the tube gets bent it gets longer and the sand gets less tight and it ends up flattening anyway. So the third try was to anneal the tube, fill it with sand, uh, and then go ahead and try to bend it. And I figured if I annealed it, it would bend more easily and it would be less prone to collapsing. Problems with annealing are that once you soften the aluminum, you've got to go and get it heat treated again. And once it gets heat treated, it ends up bending and warping. So you're not totally sure that you're going to get the final angle that you need uh, after heat treating. And when I annealed the tube and filled it with sand, it flattened anyway, so totally defeated the point. Now what I tried the very last time was something I've used before for really, really thin aluminum tube, a low temperature melting alloy, which is like a bismuth alloy, and I filled the entire tube with that and I bent it cold. That worked. And it allowed me to bend the tube cold, which means I didn't need to reheat treat it, which means that the angle that this finished at is the angle I needed. Uh, so this is the low melt um, bismuth alloy. You can see it's rock hard right now. And I'm just going to add a little heat and get it up to about 160 Fahrenheit. This has also got cadmium in it, which is something that you want to avoid uh, a lot of contact with. But just to demonstrate how low this stuff melts, I'm just going to do that. And you can see it's really not that hot. But don't do that with your bare hand because it's got cadmium and that's nasty sh That's your solidified bismuth alloy. Um, and now it's got a, a lot of weight to it. And this metal uh, will bend, but it's going to make this whole thing bend just like a solid tube of aluminum. One of the things that I figured out as I was bending these tubes is that if I set it on my bender just like this, and I go ahead and use my, uh, my radius die, I'm going to use air quotes when I say that, what ends up happening is as the metal stretches out, um, it tends to bend more in that area that it's stretched. So if I bend it unsupported like that, I end up getting kind of a kink 
in this whole thing instead of that nice smooth radius. So what I figured out from a, a wood, woodworker friend of mine actually, who does a lot of lamination, is that if you use a backing plate like that, when you go and do your bend, it keeps it from uh, bending more in the thinner areas and it keeps the, the radius of the bend nice and smooth. So that's really the trick to this whole process. And what I'm using for that backing plate is a piece of uh, quarter inch cold rolled steel. And I'm just kind of going and checking and making sure that that's sticking with the um, backing plate there. Um, so you can see as the bend is progressing, uh, you've got the wall in here thinning and the wall in here might be compressing and thickening a little bit but if you look at the whole tube you can see it's still very square and that's really what's important because if you want a structural part you really have to have the same cross section all the way through um, so I pulled that off a little shy of our bend just to make sure that it's not you know starting to tear or anything else like that So we're actually pretty much right on. And you can see uh, that really nice cross section across the whole part. There's a little bit of taper across the top and bottom here, but that's really well within you know, the limits of what we can expect from this kind of process. All right, so right here, we've got our nominal thickness, which is inch and a half. Uh, and at the inside edge of the bend, we've got inch and a half plus about 40 thou. And then on the outside, you got inch and a half minus about 40 thou. This is about as good as mandrel bending. I mean, there's really not much difference structurally here. So once I completed the bend, uh, this piece then gets trimmed to length. Uh, it gets lined up in the CNC and I actually make this cut at an angle so everything fits perfectly um, and then just gets welded up. So that's how I make that part.